All right. Well, if you get your bulletins and and get your worksheet out of there, the title today is "Blessed is the woman and man who." Dot 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 dot. We're going to find out. We're going to fill in the dots, fill in the lines. Okay. So as we look at Ephesians, it says, "Blessed and worthy of praise." Be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our, our Lord Jesus Christ and, and the Father, they are worthy of praise. In fact, we have an emptiness in us until we praise God. I know I was getting ready this morning and I was saying, God, I need to praise you. My soul needs to praise you. And when I praise him, he fills up my soul. When I worship him, he fills up our soul. So not only is he worthy to be praised, it is beneficial for us to praise and worship our God. Amen? It, it is essential for our souls to have good health, to praise and worship our God. So let's back it up again, brother. Uh, blessed and worthy of praise be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us, and here it is, who has blessed us with Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. We, how many of you need more blessings? Raise your hand. Hallelujah. Guess what? You already have them. They're already ha they're already available to us, and we're going to find out how we can uh, release those blessings in us in a few short moments. So, blessed and worthy of praise be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms in Christ. Now, that's a key word. Key words right there. In Christ. In Christ. We have to, first of all, we have to be saved. We have to be born again. Not just know about Him. We have to be born again. I know as a young man, I received, I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, but nothing happened. I wasn't born again because I wasn't being honest and truthful with God. I just wanted to tack God on to my life. I didn't want God to change my life. I just wanted to tack Him on to my life so that I had fire insurance, you know, hell fire insurance. But when I was ready to really let God change my life, He caused me to be born again. Amen? So that's where we need to do. Now, Psalm 1, 1 through 2 says, blessed. Now here's, here's the blessings. Here's the blessings, brothers and sisters. Blessed, fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God. Anybody want to be uh, fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God? Raise your hand. Amen. Blessed, fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God is the man, of course it's talking about mankind, including women. Uh, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, following their advice or example. Brothers and sisters, we have a lot of wickedness in this world today. It's getting worse. Everybody's nodding their head. Yes, it's getting worse. And those of us who want to be blessed, uh, we cannot walk the same way the world walks. We have to be separate. We have to be in the world. We have to be part of the world, but we don't have to do like the world does. Amen? It's extremely important. Is it difficult? Yes. You feel like a, an outsider. You feel like uh, isolated sometimes. But God says, blessed, uh, fortunate, prosperous, and favored by him is the man and woman who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, following their advice or their example. We have a lot of Christians out there that are following the world's examples. We don't want to be those kind of Christians. It says, nor stand in the path of sinners. We don't want to go down the path of sinners. Remember, the path of sinners is a wide road that leads to where? Destruction. It's a wide road, and there's many people on it. The majority does not rule. God rules, Amen. And we have to go by his standards. So we don't want to go down that path. Nor, nor sit down to rest in the seat of scoffers, ridiculing God's 
teachings. Now, brothers and sisters, our, our children, and I'm so upset about this, are being taught evolution. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, that is sitting in the seat of scoffers. Those, the, uh, those teachers who, 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 allow, who only teach uh, evolution, those are sitting, they're scoffing at God. They're, they're saying God, God did not make heaven and earth. It's ridiculing God's things and purposes. The same thing with uh, 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 pro, uh, pro-abortion people. They're ridiculing God, saying that th- that is not life in the womb. That is false. God knows that, that child in the womb. And the same thing with traditional marriage. God knows what is right. He created man and woman to be married, not any other way. So, uh, we don't want to sit in the seat of scoffers. But, his delight, now, this is where we come in. Our delight is in the law of the Lord. It's in his truth. It's in his power. It's in his wisdom. The truth is here. This is the only truth. God's word is the only truth. If, if there's anything that, says, that disagrees with God's word, it is not truth. It is false, and it will be brought to destruction. We delight in the law of God's word and his precepts, his teachings, and here it is. We I was going to change the word habitually, but we need to be in the habit of meditating day and night in God's Word. Amen. Day and night. Because here, here's what happens. You might know a lot about God's Word. I might know a lot about God's Word. But if I don't feast on the truth of God's Word, our minds are bombarded every day with falseness. And pretty soon it starts fueling our mind and changing our conscience. Our concept it changes our views almost we have to have a constant feeding of God's Word daily and even even more often than daily two or three times a day or more because we need to f- renew our minds by the Word of God that's the only truth that we have amen now um, I, I'm going to give you a little example because we have a little bit of extra time I was watching um, a, uh, it's called Prophecies in the 21st Century, and it, and it has a lot to do with science and, and God's Word. Here's, here's the way our minds are. How many of you know how to ride a bicycle? Good, that's good. So, you're riding along, and if you're starting to fall this way, you turn the wheel that way, right? And then pretty soon you're, you're back up, see? And you just keep going back and forth. But you know what? This one guy, this one engineer, he put a gear on it so that when you turn the handlebars, the wheel went the opposite way. Okay? Can you picture that in your mind? So, so instead of, if you're falling this way, you turn the wheel that way and the wheel goes that way, it turns the opposite way. Well, what do you do? You fall off the bike. And even though you know that it's now opposite, because your mind is trained and your body is trained, you still, can't, you still can't get it. You know intellectually you've got to turn, if you're falling this way, you've got to turn the wheel the other way. It doesn't work. And it takes an enormous amount of practice to change your mind. And you can learn how to ride a bike that way where you turn this way and the, and the, and the wheel goes that way. You can learn how to ride a bike that way. It takes a lot of practice. But then guess what? When you get on a regular bike, you can't ride that one either. So the point is, the point is, unless we fill our minds with the truth of God's word, we will be turning our bike in the wrong directions. We have to be feasting on the word of God. I hope that illustration gives you a little uh, more insight as to what we're talking about. So, uh, habitually meditate day and night on God's word. Amen? Amen. Now, uh, before I go a little bit uh, go, go uh, any further, I want to share with you that in the past weeks we have God has been sh- speaking to us about how to have a loving heart, how to have a peaceful heart, how to have a faithful heart, how to have a worthy heart, how to have a thankful heart, 
and now how to, how to have a blessed heart. So when we have a heart full of thanks, there are a multitude of huge benefits, we learned this last week, that go along with a thankful heart. With a thankful heart, it is very difficult to be angry, bitter, depressed, worried, or sad when you have a thankful heart. When we're thanking God for what he has given us and for when, we're, when we're focused our minds on, on what he has shown us and blessed us with, we have a thankful heart. It is, it is, it is difficult to be, again, angry, bitter, depressed, worried, or sad. And the list goes on and on. With a thankful heart, we will have also a peaceful heart. When we have a thankful heart to God for what he has given us, we will have a peaceful heart, a joyful heart, a loving and caring heart at the same time. And all of this in spite of facing trials and tribulations. So the only, but the only way to have a thankful heart, a truly thankful heart, is to have Jesus' heart and life flowing through us by total surrender and obedience to him and his plan for our lives. This is how we can in everything give thanks because we know where we're headed we know we're headed to the kingdom of God we know that God is going to make everything perfect uh, sometimes I look at this world and I say oh Lord we're so messed up not only not only the world and, and people around us but me as well we're, me we're, we're messed up Lord I'm so thankful that we have the hope that you will make everything perfect perfect forever. Amen. What a blessing that is. Everything's going to be right. No one's going to be complaining or no one's going to be getting hurt or abused or mistreated. Everything in the kingdom of heaven is going to be perfect. What a, what a blessing that is. And, and in order to do that, God has to change our minds, all of our minds, to be like his mind. And when he does that, that will be heaven and when we do that here on earth we will be have a portion of heaven here within us amen, amen? when we let god change our hearts and minds to be like his so god's word for today again is how to have a blessed blessed heart now we looked at ephesians 1 3 we looked at psalms uh oh, we're gonna look at oh we're still yeah we looked at psalms 1 one through two. Now we're going to look at um, the Sermon on the Mount. We're going to look at the Beatitudes. If you want to look in your, your own Bible, it's in Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 uh, through 12. We're going to look at Jesus' Sermon on the Mount called the Beatitudes. Now, anybody look up the de definition of Beatitude? Beatitude means supreme blessedness, exalted happiness exalted happiness that's pretty powerful isn't it exalted happiness exalted by god himself supreme blessedness god is our supreme father he blesses us now so this is how to have the beatitudes in our lives today and forever so in matthew uh, 5 1 and 2 it says when jesus saw the crowds he went up on the mountain and he and when he was seated his disciples came to him and he began, and in the King, King James it says, he opened his mouth to teach them, saying, Blessed, spiritually prosperous, happy to be admired are the poor in spirit. Who, who are the poor in spirit? Those devoid of spiritual arrogance. Now, when I think of spiritual arrogance, I think of the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the scribes. They were arrogant. They were saying, Jesus, why do you eat with those people? They're sinners. <laughs> saying to themselves that we're better than them. But we don't have that kind of arrogance. We know and we've, we've admitted that we are sinful without Christ. With Christ, we are perfect. Without Christ, we are sinful. When we walk in Christ, we are perfect because he is perfect. Amen. But we have no spiritual arrogance. We're not better than anybody else, are we? 
Is anybody here better than anyone else? No way. <laughs> so, blessed, spiritually prosperous, happy to be admired are the poor in spirit, those devoid of spiritual arrogance, and those who regard themselves as insignificant in comparison to God. We can c compare ourselves with the other people and say, well, I, I'm better than that person over here, and uh, I do this, and better than that, and better than them, and... But that's not who our comparison is supposed to be. If we're going to be in heaven, we have to be perfect. Again, in Christ, we are perfect. Praise God that he has given us his perfection. Amen? We can throw everything we think we are out the window and say, Lord, uh, I plead guilty, and I throw myself on the mercy of the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 All right, so... Um, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven both now and forever so let me read just the black portions blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are those who are devoid of spiritual arrogance who regard themselves as insignificant compar compar in comparison to God for theirs is the kingdom of heaven when we recognize that we are spiritually bankrupt without Christ we are blessed we're blessed. And in the world, it, it seems it's opposite. The, the prouder you are, the better you are. But in this case, in God's truth, the more we realize how undone we are, the more blessed we become because he fills us with him. Amen? Isn't that awesome? So, so Jesus opened his mouth, and, and when he opened his mouth, we're still, you know, we're still back on the... Uh, when he opened his mouth, it's a it's an interesting word called uh, Greek word called stoma, and what it means in Greek is a, an opening in the face. <laughs> well, that that makes sense, right? Um, it also means a language, and this is all normal. However, there is another specific meaning of the word stoma, which is the front edge of a sword. So Jesus is opening his face to speak in language as a front edge of a weapon. Well, what kind of weapon? A weapon against all evil so that we can all be blessed. The weapon is truth. So Jesus is speaking truth. Now remember, our words or can be weapons against evil or our words can be guided by our, uh, can be weapons against evil or they can be weapons for good. If we follow God's plan and God's purposes, our words will be filled with good. Amen? So, uh, now in, in Matthew 5.3, it goes on to say, it says, Blessed are the, are the poor in spirit, those who uh, use their mouths as, as weapons against evil for good. Amen? Now, in Matthew 5.4, uh, we look at uh, blessed, forgiven, refreshed by God's grace. If you want to be blessed, if you want to be forgiven, if you want to be refreshed by God's grace, blessed are those who mourn over their sins and repent. Brothers and sisters, uh, I hope that you mourn and repent over your sins. I know I, am, I do that almost daily. Repent of, of, uh, of my selfish attitudes, my, my narcissistic, whatever, whatever it is that's, uh, that's not of God. Amen. And I mourn over this. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. Help me not to be like that. Help me to be renewed and refreshed. Help me to rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and in everything give thanks, like we learned last week. Um, so blessed... Forgiven and refreshed by God are those who mourn over their sins and repent, for they will be comforted when the burden of sin is lifted. Uh, as, soon, as soon as you know you sin, as soon as I know I sin, I feel a heaviness. And when I repent and turn from it, God takes and lifts that burden off of us. What an amazing, amazing feeling. I know it happens to be several times a week. Lord, forgive me. And, 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 and the dark cloud goes away. We all know who Charlie Brown is and he always seems to have a dark cloud. Well, uh, we can remove this dark cloud 
by, by confessing our sin and repenting and asking God to forgive us um, of our sins. Now in Matthew 5, 5, it says, Blessed, inwardly peaceful, spiritually secure, worthy of respect, are the gentle or the meek, the kind-hearted, the sweet-spirited, the self-controlled by the Holy Spirit, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are the gentle or meek, for they will inherit the earth. Amen? Amen. Now, what if you're not gentle or meek? Anybody here not gentle or meek? Well, you, you can admit, sometimes I'm not gentle or meek. Sometimes I'm, I'm, uh, I'm the opposite of that. <laughs> so, but what, what if you're not gentle or meek? What, we have to go to Jesus again. And what does Jesus say in Matthew eleven twenty eight? 28? Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy burdened, and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart. And you will find rest for your souls. People, people, and myself included, when people, when we are mean-spirited and aggressive, uh, our souls are not at rest. We're at rest when we're in the Spirit of God and we have a humble, contrite, gentle heart. Amen? So, blessed, blessed are those uh, who, uh, bring that back again, brother. Blessed are those are the gentle or meek for they will inherit the earth. The earth in order for us uh, to live uh, in, the, in the new heaven and the new earth, all of us are going to have to be gentle and humble because there's going to be no one better than anybody else. Amen? Amen. So let's go to Matthew 5, 6. Then, or no, Matthew, you know, we already read that. Um, Matthew 5, 6. Blessed. Here's another definition of blessed. Joyful, nourished by God's goodness. Do, you, do we realize that in order to have goodness, we, it has to be nourishment from God? God has to nourish us. We don't get that from the world. We have to be nourished by God himself. Blessed, uh, joyful, nourished by God, by God's goodness, are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Those who actively seek right standing with God. For they will be, how much satisfied? Completely satisfied. Anybody need some satisfaction? Amen. Anybody need to be... Uh, we need to be, we need to hunger and thirst for righteousness. Not for the things of this world, but for righteousness. Hunger and thirst for righteousness. Brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, when we actively seek right standing with God constantly, we're going to be blessed and completely filled and satisfied. When we are right standing with God, God does not withhold any blessing from us even in the middle of persecution, trials, or tribulations. That's how we can be blessed in spite of what's going on around us, by seeking God's righteousness and having a thirst and a hunger for Him and His righteousness. Amen? Now, um, going to Matthew 5, eight. Oh, 5.7. I almost skipped one. Blessed. Here again is another, another definition of being blessed. Uh, supremely, remember, supremely, uh, supreme blessings and uh, and exalted blessings. I forget the, what, what, the, uh, what the term was. Let me remember that. Exalted happiness. Blessed, content, sheltered by God's promises are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Now, there's a gift called mercy. Anybody have the gift of mercy? Where you feel enormous compassion and mercy for other people. Some people have it. Amen. 
And, and, and it's a gift. It's a gift. To have a merciful heart, to have compassion for others is a, is a gift from God. Now, we are all to have merciful hearts by the Holy Spirit. But when we walk in the Spirit, we will have a merciful heart. We will have mercy upon others. Uh, mercy meaning uh, love and care for other people. Being merciful is to have daily active compassion for others. Daily active compassion for others. It becomes a way of life to those of us who are actively seeking right standing with God because God is merciful to us. He's always merciful because we are His children. Amen? So, um, if you're lacking mercy, go to God, ask Him for His mercy, and He will give it to you. Amen? Well, Matthew 5, 8 says, blessed, another definition of blessed, constantly seeking God's presence. Brothers and sisters, we need God's presence constantly in our lives. Constantly. When we're at work, when we're at school, when we're at the grocery store, when we're driving down the road, we need God's presence constantly. So when we constantly seek God's presence, we become spiritually mature. Because in His presence, we are in the maturity of the, of the Holy Spirit of God. Um, blessed constantly seeking God's presence, spiritually mature, all the pure in heart. Brothers and sisters, what a blessing, blessed, blessed thing it is to have a pure heart. Uh, what is a pure heart? Those with integrity, moral courage, and godly character. For they will see God. Now, this, is, this doesn't mean you see him with your eyes or hear him with your ears. This means you see him in, in the spiritual realm that, that only he can reveal himself to you uh, through spiritual eyes and spiritual ears. Does that make sense? We, we can't see God with our five senses. It has to be a, a, a sixth and seventh sense or dimension. Okay, so, uh, so do we have integrity? Well, what is integrity? Well, do we keep our word when we say we will do something? Brothers and sisters, that's important. Uh, when we make a vow to God, God expects us to keep that vow. Um, do we follow through? Uh, can people count on us and trust us? Do people consider us to be loyal? Do we, ha do we have moral courage to stand up for what is right in God's eyes, even if everyone else is doing something different? How many of you saw the movie God's Not Dead? Awesome! Everybody, almost everybody. That's a great movie. Here we have a whole classroom full of, of students and one teacher who wants everyone to confess that God is dead. But this one student, he couldn't do it because he had moral courage. God gave him moral courage to stand true to his, to his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He stood against the teacher and all those students because God was on his side. Amen? Now, who is the majority? God. When God is on our side, He's the majority. Amen? So even though you may be standing alone against someone in, at your workplace or your school, with God, you are the majority. Because God will rule. Amen? He will rule. Um, spiritual maturity. Let's see. Um, so... To be pure in heart is to have our motives focused on God's will and God's plans. And in this world, that is very, very difficult. Very, very difficult. And, and in third world countries, it is even more difficult. Our brothers and sisters who, who love the Lord are being killed to the tune of 100,000 a year are martyred for Christ, at least. That takes moral courage. We we have a and we might be doing a Bible study called Radical, and uh, 
it tells tells a story of uh, two teenagers, and um, uh, I'll just wait and relay that to you. But they're teenagers, and well, I'll just give you this part. They're teenagers, and they're telling this pastor from America that they're they're about ready. They're getting prepared. They're having intensive study in God's Word, intensive study, because they're going to go out into the rural areas areas of Asia to preach the gospel, and. This one teenager says um, to his family, uh, I'm going to go uh, s certain places and uh, I may lose my life. I may never see you again. Teenagers are going, uh, leaving their families. And, and then the other, the other teenager chimes in and says, uh, but even though we might lose our lives, our parents understand because they've been in prison for their belief in Christ. So they understand. Brothers and sisters, do we realize how critical it is that we be more, have moral courage uh, and stand for what's true because it is, it is vital for the furtherance of the gospel and for those people's lives around us. They, they are whether they don't know it, but they are. They need us to be morally courageous to stand on the truth of God's word, because one day God may break through their heart and they will receive Him as Lord and Savior. Then they'll say, "I'm glad you were so. You stood morally courageous on the truth of God's word." Um, so that's the pure in heart. That's the pure in heart. Uh, we have to be pure in heart. And we can only get this purity from God and His Word. Well, Matthew 9 says, Well, yeah. Blessed, spiritually calm with a joyful life in God's favor. Did you know that you can be spiritually calm no matter how much duress there is around you and even pointed at you? Because blessed are the peacemakers and maintainers of peace, for they will be called the sons and daughters of God. Spiritually calm with a joyful life in God's favor are the peacemakers and maintainers of peace, for they will express His character and be called the sons of God. Now, here the Lord is speaking about people who actively seek a reconciliation with God, to have the peace of God. Now, when we have our own peace with God through faith and trust in Christ and we're born again, we need to share it with others so that they can be reconciled with God. Amen? Amen? God not only wants us to be at peace with Him uh, through faith in Christ, but God also wants us to be at peace with others. Yes. Amen? In Matthew 5, uh, the next PowerPoint screen says, so, if you are presenting your offering at the altar, and while there you remember that your brother has something such as a grievance or legitimate complaint against you, leave your offering there at the altar and go first make what? Peace. Peace with your brother. Then come and present your offering. God is very concerned about your relationships with other people because you and I represent Him. And so even if, even if you're 100% right, and if this is your spouse or your parents, you need to go to them and say, I know we're, we're, we're in disagreement, but I just want you to know I love you and I care for you, and uh, maybe at a later time we can talk about this and work this out. We have to be peacemakers. We have to make our attempt to reconcile with everybody. Not, not just people we like. Everybody. Because that's how God is. And he, we have His heart. We have His, um, his call to be peacemakers. And, and He will bless us when we do that. Because blessed are those who are persecuted. Well, blessed. Oh, <laughs> uh, back up one, brother. Oh, yeah, For, we are blessed by being peacemakers and maintaining peace with us. 
First make peace with your brother, then come and present your offering. God wants uh, us to have peaceful relationships. Now, sometimes you run across somebody that does not want to have peace with you. And that's very evident in the world. But as far as you're concerned, you have to always attempt to make peace with everyone. Even if they're wrong. You leave the door open for a peaceful uh, resolution. Amen? You don't, you don't, we don't sacrifice God's word or we don't compromise God's word, but we leave the door open for a peaceful resolution. Amen? Amen? Now, Ma uh, Matthew 5.10 says, Blessed, comforted by inner peace in God's love. You know, that's the only place we, we can have peace. Really, a constant supply of peace is to have inner peace, and that inner peace has to come from God living in us, and that, God, and that has to be released by us seeking and focusing to to totally on Him. Amen? Blessed, comforted by the inner peace and God's love are those who are persecuted for doing that which is morally right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven both now and forever. Now, when a Christian, brothers and sisters, when a tr Christian, when you or I, truly stand for Jesus' righteousness, we will be persecuted. I know when we go on visitation, Brother, Brother Ray gets upset because people slam the doors on him and, and it hurts him. And it should hurt him. But it's okay. Uh, we pray for him. We keep the doors open. And we, say, and we ask God to break through his hardened heart. Amen? So that we can speak the truth of God's word to him. So when we stand for pro-life, pro-traditional marriage, this takes spiritual courage. The ungodly do not like people who are righteous because it exposes their own unrighteousness. Now, I know, I know brothers and sisters, before I was saved, I didn't like those religious zealots around me either. <laughs> they bugged me. And guess what? They bug every unbeliever. But that's what we're here for. We're here to, as Christians, we're here to bug them so that they will have the opportunity to receive Christ as Lord and Savior and be born again. Amen. God knows we're going to be persecuted. They persecuted him because he bugged them. Now, I don't mean that we're supposed to be uh, arrogantly uh, bugging people. <laughs> we have to do it in a loving, caring way. We have to do it different than we would have done it before. But ungodly people do not like people who are righteous because it exposes their own unrighteousness. It convicts them of their own sins. Therefore, Christians who stand for Jesus and his biblical truth will be persecuted. However, in spite of the persecution, we will receive from God inner love, peace, and joy. And this is a quote by, by William MacDonald of the Believer's Bible Commentary. So, as we continue on, Matthew 5.11 Blessed, morally courageous, and spiritually alive with a joyful life in God's goodness are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil things against you because of your association with me, with Jesus. If you, and you can talk about God to a lot of people, but as soon as you say Jesus, the walls come up, the insults come out. Because Jesus is the Redeemer. He is God. He is the only way to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. There's only one mediator between God and man, and it is Christ Jesus. There is no other way. There is no other uh, Redeemer. Um, that's why we have to stand on the truth of God's word. So, to suffer for Christ's sake is a privilege that should cause joy. When you... When, <laughs> When you suffer for Jesus' sake, I know sometimes we get sad. But you know what? God says, don't be sad. Be joyous. Be joyous. A great reward awaits those who become companions of the prophets of old in tribulation. They, they, they persecuted the prophets of old. And those Old Testament spoken for God stood true in spite of persecution. Jeremiah, Isaiah, Hosea, uh, all, all those Old Testament prophets, they stood 
true to God's word. And we will share their exhilaration and future exaltation when we stand true to God's word. Amen? It's difficult. That's why this room is not full. Because it is difficult. We are the remnant. We are the, we are the, the tip of the sword. You are the tip of the sword. And some others that are not here because of illness. But we are the tip of the sword. Remember, broad is the way. And wide is the road that leads to destruction. But narrow is the way. And straight is the path. And few people that are on it to righteousness. Well, let's go to 2 Timothy. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. That's right. Psalm 63 says again, uh, whatever we suffer for Christ, it's, it's okay because, because God's love, your loving kindness, God, is better than life itself. Brothers and sisters, when we start ch chewing on that and we spiritually wrap our minds around that, we will see God's loving kindness towards us is better than life itself. There isn't anything else greater. And my lips shall praise you. Amen? Amen. Well, let's go to uh, Matthew 5, 12. Be glad and exceedingly joyful, for your reward in heaven is great. Your reward in heaven is great. It is absolutely inexhaustible, for in this same way they pers persecuted the prophets who were before us. Brothers and sisters, Again, you're the tip of the sword. Go and tell people about Jesus. You're the tip of the sword. Great is your reward. And, and it is absolutely inexhaustible. Amen? Is it scary? Yeah. Is it, is it difficult? Yeah. But God will strengthen you and he will take the fear from you because when we understand how much God loves us and how much he loves those people around us, his love will give us the strength and compel us to tell others about him. Even Jeremiah said, I'm not going to tell anybody about God anymore because every time I do, uh, I, I get thrown in the stocks or I get thrown in prison and, and they laugh at me and, they, and he says, but... His word is burning in my heart like a fire. He says, I'm trying to hold it in. I get weary of holding in. And indeed, I cannot hold it in. Brothers and sisters, let God's word out and share it with the people around you. Amen? Because your reward in heaven is great. It is absolutely inexhaustible. 2 Timothy, uh, in the next part of says, yes, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution, but evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse. Well, that's a little bit disheartening. But they will be deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. We have learned them from the very mouth of God himself. Amen. And that from your childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. So, so being blessed, being blessed is the void of spiritual arrogance, regarding ourselves as insignificant, mourning over our sins and repent and repentant. When we blessed is when we are kind hearted, sweet spirited, self controlled by the Holy Spirit. Be blessed is when we are actively seeking right, standing with God constantly. Be blessed is when we are merciful to others in spite of their ugliness. Amen? And guess what? I have a little newsflash for you. Every one of us has some ugliness. Amen? On the next PowerPoint screen, being blessed is filled with integrity, moral courage, and godly character. Being blessed is when we are peacemakers and maintainers of peace. When we are persecuted for doing which is that which is morally right. When we are insulted and persecuted and they say falsely all kinds of evil things against us because of our association with Jesus. We are being blessed. Amen. We are blessed. God says, I'm going to bless you and nobody can stop me. I'm going to bless you when you do 
these things, when you surrender to my spirit and to my ways, you are blessed. Amen. Goes on to say, being blessed means we will be, and here it is, we will be spiritually prosperous. We will be happy. We will be admired, maybe by not people here, but in the kingdom of heaven, we will be admired. We will be forgiven. We will be refreshed by God's grace, inwardly peaceful, spiritually secure, worthy of respect, joyful, nourished by God's goodness, contented. Amen? This is blessed. Sheltered by God's promises. We are sheltered by God's promises. And, and, and we are always wanting and anticipating God's presence in our lives. Amen? Being blessed means we are spiritually mature. We are spiritually calm with the joyful favor of God. We are comforted by inner peace with God's love. We are morally courageous and spiritually alive with God's favor of goodness. Amen? Isn't this amazing? When these nine uh, blessing, uh, nine blessed attributes or beatitudes become part of our thoughts and our actions, uh, they will bring us the promised states of blessings to our lives overwhelmingly. Amen? Now listen, brothers and sisters. Here it is. Here's the close. For a Christian, there is no other way to be blessed than to be blessed by God. The world cannot offer these types of deep, internal, external, and essential blessings. The world cannot provide any of those. So we go finish with Matthew 5, 12. Be glad and exceedingly joyful. For your reward in heaven is great. It is absolutely inexhaustible. For in this, the same way, they persecuted all the prophets who were before us. Amen? Is there a hallelujah in the house today? You are blessed, brothers and sisters. We are blessed. We just need to surrender to God in totality and let him release who he is in and through us. That's why he says, deny yourself, take up my cross, and follow me, Amen. and you will be blessed. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we